Hello everybody, welcome back to more Plants vs. Zombies, the game that shows you that the toughest, coolest job that you can have is being a professional gardener. So, we've completed the first five levels of the game, we're ready to continue adventure mode. We are now on level six and we're going to be finishing up the first world today. I guess we're getting that every single time we start the game, wonderful. Oh, that's a new zombie type right there. Alright, so last time we finished by getting the potato mine, which is a very useful plant, I'll be getting into that. So, potato mine is nice because it only costs 25 sun and it can kill a zombie in one hit. However, it only works once before it disappears and it needs some time to arm itself up, so I'm going to show you how it'll work. So we have a zombie right here, we're going to take a potato mine and plant it right here all the way down this lane. Now it'll be able to, as you can see, it's still buried in the ground, so it's not going to be able to do anything right now. And if a zombie reaches it while it's in this state, the zombie will just be able to eat it, no problem. But what's nice is because there's only one zombie on screen right now, he's going to take a while to reach there. And as you can see, now the potato mine has popped up, and now he's fully armed, so when the zombie reaches him, he'll be in for a nasty surprise. Now what's nice about potato mine is, while it's not going to be good long term, be simply because... Uh, it's not going to be able to deal with all the zombies. At the, we get the Spadao achievement. What's really nice about this is that the Potato Mine can very effectively take out the first few zombies that appear because they only really appear one at a time at the beginning of the level, which means we can spend all of our sun early on for on building up our sunflower supply, which means by the time the zombies start coming in at a larger, at a faster rate, we'll have more than enough sun to be able to build things like pea shooters to effectively shut them down. And as you can see, that's exactly what we're doing. So we got Conehead Zombies. Again, more HP than the regular zombies, but not much to them besides that. However, there's going to be a new zombie type that emerges. As you saw when we saw the group of zombies at the beginning, there was one that was dressed in a funny outfit and carrying a vaulting pole. That is the pole vaulting zombie. And I'll, I'll wait to show you what happens when one of those appears. In the meantime, we're just going to keep building up our pea shooter supply. I should have put another pea shooter in that lane to deal with the cone head, but that's okay. We can plant the walnut to delay him a bit. I'll put a potato mine down so that way in case the two pea shooters aren't enough, the potato mine will finish him off. So this is the pole vaulting zombie here. As you can see, he's a good deal faster than some of the other zombies. And what happens is if he reaches a plant, he vaults over the plant, so he can jump over plants. However, the nice thing is that after he jumps over a plant, he slows down back to the speed of a regular zombie. He has a bit more HP than a regular zombie, but not as much as a conehead. They can still be dangerous, though. So, but gotta watch out. We just put in some landmines for fun. I'll get rid of the walnut as he's partially eaten, and we want pea shooters there instead. I guess I now have enough... I just planted another sunflower there because he was cheap and had a fast enough recharge to deal with the, to make the pole vaulting zombie get rid of his pole. Normally I would plant something like a walnut to stop the pole vaulting zombie, but I had just planted one, so I couldn't plant another one that quickly. That's okay, our, our, our sunflower is just chilling there. Huge wave of zombies is approaching. The final wave. This means it's the perfect time. Yar! It's the perfect time to use a cherry bomb. Boom. And with that, we have cleared another level. And we get another plant. This one's one of my favorites. Here we get a new plant. The snow pea shoots frozen peas that damage and slow down the enemy. So as you can see, it's a different version of the pea shooter. It costs almost twice as much sun to plant, but it can slow enemies down to half speed. That's really good, and we're going to see that in action. So we're on level 7 now. So we got regular zombies, we got cone, a cone zombie, and we've got the vaulting zombies. So once again, I'll just kind of show you, <laughs> remind you guys of what to do. Just focus on building up your sunflowers and use those potato mines early on. And you should be golden.
It's also important that you groove out to the music, because this game has very good music. Yeah, so you'll notice I didn't really make any use of the potato mines after the beginning of the level. Again, even just the small ability to effectively take out the first few zombies so you can focus everything, basically, on building up your sunflower supply, that's really nice. Because we don't have to divide our sun between sunflowers and pea shooters, thus taking a while to build up our sunflower supply. Nope. None of that. And especially now that we have snow peas, which we're going to want to use, and they cost a bit more, being able to have sunflowers to get us a lot of sun early on is going to be even more important. If you just have pea shooters that you're using, then it's not as important to use the potato mines. But later on in the game, when we start making use of more and more expensive plants, that's going to become more important. So I'll show you what the snow pea does. So I'm going to plant him at the back of the lane. So as you can see, he's getting hit by the peas. The peas, uh, the frozen peas do the same amount of damage as the regular peas, but now it turns the zombie cold. And as you can see, he's moving at an even slower speed than he normally does. So it's very nice. So as you can see, it, it's going to slow down the zombie enough that I can plant a potato mine there, and the potato mine should arm itself by the time the zombie reaches there. So he's going to start eating, but he also eats twice as slowly, so it's going to take him twice as long to eat it. And the potato mine can arm itself while being eaten and then kill the zombie before he can finish the job, which is great. And the nice thing about the snow peas is, yeah, they're almost twice the price of the pea shooter, but you only need one in every lane. Because at this point... We can just spend all of our sun on regular pea shooters because the snow peas will make sure that they're slowed down. Having multiple snow peas in one lane really doesn't make that any better unless you're facing a huge amount of zombies all in one lane and they can't keep up with slowing everyone down. But that almost never happens. So at this point, all of the zombies that come on the screen are going to be slow. Or at least going to get slowed down by the snow peas. So it basically makes your pea shooters twice as good just by nature of having that, which is really, really nice. I mean, it's not like this game was difficult, but this this makes the game even easier. And hey, I'm a big believer in taking advantage of everything you can in the game. It's here for a reason, so let's use it. As you can see, yeah, I'm not even bothering with the cherry bomb until it's the final wave. I'm not even bothering with the walnuts. I don't need to, because there's no reason to hold the zombies back. They're so slow, and there are so few of them, that it doesn't even matter. Okay. Although, for the pole vaulting zombie, I will. I will do that. Because the pole vaulting zombie, even when slowed down, still moves decently fast. And again, they have more HP than you might think. but nothing really new here. And the pole vaulting zombie will vault over any plant that it reaches. Except I don't think it'll vault over a cherry bomb because that's an unusual plant and that it just blows itself up immediately. But yeah, it doesn't matter if it's a walnut or a sunflower or a potato mine or even like a pea shooter, it'll jump over it as soon as it reaches it. Yeah, the levels are still very easy. The zombies that you face get tougher and tougher, but as you get better and better at plants, it really doesn't matter. And I'm actually now at the point where I, I think I want to remove these walnuts. Because I actually think that that's going to hinder me, because... While the zombies are... While the vaulting zombies are vaulting over something, they become invincible until they finish. And on top of that, when they vault over something, they basically skip two squares. Because they vault over the plant once their vaulting pole reaches it, which it extends like one square in front of them. And then they basically just skip two squares. So they can actually use that to potentially get a lot of ground. So you want to kill... You either want them to immediately vault and not have a plant right next to the barrier that they vault over, or you want to kill them before they can vault. 
Whichever comes first. Final wave. Alright, this is where we break up. So as you can see, like, the vaulting zombie is getting slowed down. The zombie behind him is not. And that's because the pea shooter can only hit one zombie at a time. And the vaulting zombie was basically acting as a shield to the other zombie. So that is one situation where the snow pea can not keep up if you have a huge amount of zombies all in one lane. But again, that very rarely happens. And now we get our next plant. This is the Chomper. Devours a zombie whole, but is vulnerable while chewing. Costs 150 sun. This is the first plant that's honestly just not very good. I know he looks like Piranha Plant from the Mario series, and he definitely does. But And he sounds interesting, but he's honestly a pretty bad plant. I'm going to show him off, but yeah, he's just he's inefficient. But we'll get into that in this level. Back to my house. That's a new enemy type. So now things get interesting. So in the past, we've in the last few levels, well, in all the levels we've done, we've never had this before because we've always been able to take all of our plants that we've had on the level because we haven't had that many. However, we can only take six plants on each level. And now that we have seven plants, we have to choose which six to bring. And on the screen, we also see which zombies that we're going up against. So we've got buckethead zombies, regular zombies, and conehead zombies. Bucket zombies are a new enemy type. They're basically like cone zombies, except the bucket gives them even more HP, so they take a lot of firepower to bring them down. So, what plants to bring? Always bring Sunflower, because you need them. Definitely gonna bring Pea Shooter and Snow Pea and Potato Mine for those first couple of enemies. And I think I'm gonna bring Walnut, and I'm gonna bring Chomper just to show them off, but I, in... I would rather bring Cherry Bomb, but honestly, Cherry Bomb is just not that helpful because the it, it levels are so easy, you don't really need to blow up a small area. So, this is what we're going to do. Ready, set, plant. So, this level, get used to levels starting like this. Sunflowers plus Potato Mines. So yeah, Chompers are interesting because they can literally kill zombies in one hit, just like the Potato Mine. And unlike the Potato Mine, which works once and then it disappears, the Chomper can potentially eat infinite zombies. There's no limit. And basically, the Chomper will stay there, and once the zombie's like one square in front of him, the Chomper will eat the zombie, kill it in one hit, but then the Chomper has to take around 60 seconds, I think, to chew the zombie up and swallow it before it can eat another one. So it can basically kill one zombie a minute. That's not very good. That's, that's a low rate of... of destruction when you consider how many zombies p a, s a bunch of pea shooters can kill it's just not very good it's cool in theory they have their uses but i consider them one of the weaker plants in the game but what is one fun thing you can do with the chompers is you can put them behind a walnut and then when the zombies reach the walnut and start eating it, the chopper will be able to eat the zombie through the walnut. So that is pretty cool. Again, it's still not super efficient, especially because the chopper takes the same amount of time to kill a zombie no matter how much HP it has. If it eats a zombie that's literally about to die, it still needs to take the full 60 seconds that it would even if it ate, say, a buckethead zombie with full HP. Which is a bit frustrating. So if the, And because you can't control what zombie the chopper eats... It just eats the first one that reaches it. More often than not, I find that the Chomper ends up eating a zombie that would have died really easily anyways. So I think to combat that, I'm gonna put the... I'm gonna put the uh, Walnut a little farther away. And then I'll put a Chomper behind that, so that way... Generally speaking, the only zombies that will actually reach the Walnut are the ones that are really strong, like Bucketheads. I think I would have been able to save enough for the Snoopy to kill him before he reached there, but eh. Phew, I timed that perfectly. If I was even a little bit uh, later, I think the uh, it would have gotten eaten. Okay, yeah, so for this I'll show, I'll show off the Chomper. I love the design of the Chomper. Uh, one other nice thing about the Chomper is that it's a it's a plant that, as soon as you plant it, it can one-hit kill a zombie, and it does have a fast recharge. So if you have a huge amount of sun, you can actually use it to kill a bunch of zombies uh, all in a row, because you can kind of spam plant them. 
Yeah, so Buckethead Zombie, boom. Chomper ate him through the walnut. And now he's going to eat the zombie. That's another reason why you generally want walnuts in combination with the chompers, because in order for the chomper to be able to damage anything, it has to be at the front of the lane, or in front of all your other plants. And that means that they are vulnerable. Like, they're they're quite vulnerable to being uh, chewed on by zombies while they are chewing on zombies. So I'm gonna have a chomper behind a walnut in every lane. It's gonna be funny, but I, it's not going to be particularly efficient. I generally think it's a better idea to just replace these guys with just a lane of pea shooters. As you can see, that chomper just ate the zombie, so he's ready for another meal. But as you can see, because I have to plant these choppers, that's eating away at my sun fund for the pea shooters. Yeah, so as you can see, this is one good example. So, if we can kill, yeah. If we can kill the regular zombie before the bucket zombie gets here, then that's actually good, because then the chomper will be able to finish off the bucket zombie. But if the regular zombie had gotten to the chomper before we killed him, the chomper would have eaten the regular zombie that was on death's door, and the bucket head zombie would still be at full HP, which would have been annoying. But that's chomper in a nutshell. And here we get a very nice plant. One of my favorite plants in the whole game. It's the repeater. Fires two peas at a time. So it's basically two pea shooters in one plant. So yes, you could accomplish the exact same thing that this guy does just by planting two pea shooters in the same lane, but he takes up half the space. And trust me, later levels are going to be a lot longer, and it'll be nice to be able to use up extra, sp to save extra space on the lawn to be able to have these powerful enemies. Plus, it means that if you have one repeater all the way in the back of the lane, then it takes the zombies a very long time to reach them, whereas if you have to split them across two regular pea shooters, then they, there's a chance the zombie can reach the, uh, the frontmost pea shooter before you can take him out. So yeah, this guy's really good. We'll be using him on almost every level. And here we go, level 9. Got a couple of every zombie. Alright, so for this one I'll be doing Sunflower and Potato Mine. Snow Pea, Repeater, Walnut... I'm not going to bring the regular pea shooter. I'm going to be using repeater from now on, so I'll, I'll bring cherry bomb. Ready, set, plant. Yep, I, I'm no longer bringing basic boy. I like pea shooter, but I find basically as soon as you get repeater, you don't really use pea shooter much after that, because repeater is just so much better. And if you implement this, the whole use the potato mine to kill the first couple zombies, uh, strategy, you, s you end up saving a lot of sun, which means by the time the zombies become a threat, you'll have more than enough sun to start planting repeaters where you need them. Again, one of the real reasons why potato mine may not sound that great, but they really are. <laughs> the fact that they only cause 25 sun and can one-hit kill zombies is fantastic. Doesn't matter if they have a slow recharge, doesn't matter if they need, like, 15 seconds to arm themselves. Less than that, I think it's more like 10. Ooh, they're so good. That's not to say that potato mines are going to be phenomenal throughout the entire game. They do get uh, overshadowed by better plants later on, but still. And plus, I have a soft spot for potatoes. They are the best vegetable. Although, I must admit, frozen peas are really good. Frozen peas are better than actual regular peas. This has been Artie's hot take for the day. Oh, I timed that well. I'm not sure if one snow pea will be able... I think one snow pea can take out a conehead zombie if they're this far back in the lane. But just in case, I'm, I planted it. The potato mine. It's only 25 sun. And this will make sure the job gets done while I can make sure I have my other uh, lanes fortified. 
And again, if you're if you're wondering how do I know exactly where to plant the potato mine so that way it'll be active when the zombie reaches there, I've played this game a lot, so it's just it comes down to experience. Generally, if a zombie is not slowed down, I recommend point and it's moving at the speed of a regular zombie, I recommend putting the potato mine like maybe three squares in front of it. And if it is slowed down, put it like two squares in front of it. Alright, here comes the repeater. As you can see, look at how fast that fires. Repeater is one of your more powerful plants in the game, so it racks up a lot of damage in a little space. And I do believe that this level is going to be a bit on the longer side. Some levels only have one... Levels are a bit kind of measured in terms of how many huge waves there are. So what happens is you'll get, like, a spursing of zombies, then a huge wave, then another spursing of zombies, then another huge wave, and that's kind of how the levels go. And depending on how many huge waves of zombies a level has, that kind of affects how long it is. So some levels will have one huge wave, some will have two, some will have three, and a couple levels will even have four. And I don't think it goes beyond four. And actually, it may not even go beyond three in this game. I'm not sure if four huge waves was just for Plants vs. Zombies 2 or not. So this is the first huge wave, and because it didn't say final wave, there's at least one more coming in the future. So as you can see, like, I don't have that many plants, especially offensive plants, but we're still, like, obliterating all of the zombies. And that's because of these repeaters. And the Snopees. Like, look at this. We got a bucket zombie. Normally I've been using insta-kill plants, like the chompers, to deal with him. Nope. Don't eat him. We're gonna slaughter this guy alone before he reaches that repeater. You can also tell how close the zombie is to death based on... Uh, their physical attributes, so, like, the bucket gets more and more beat up as you, as you damage it. Even regular zombies, you can tell, like, if a zombie doesn't have any equipment, you'll know that they're close to death after their arm falls off. It's the little visual cues that can help you get better at the game. I like the sound of like, so yeah, Bucket is uh, straight and normal. Bucket gets a little dent, so he's missing like a third of his HP. Bucket is bent like that, and you can see one of his eyes, so you know it's uh, the Bucket's like about to be destroyed. And now the Bucket's destroyed, and he's just a regular zombie. So this can be annoying. If there's a Buckethead zombie in front of a Vaulting zombie, it could have ended up bad, but nope. Okay, Dane. Man, those vaulting zombies have more HP than even I remember. Like, I feel like they had the same amount of HP almost as a conehead. Not really, but like, he took like twice as much damage, I think, as a regular zombie. He got pelted with peas. Alright, second huge wave. Is this going to be the final one? Sure enough, I guess this is where we use our cherry bomb. Just in case you get any funny ideas. Oh, and no new plant here. Instead, we get something else. It's a note. Hello, we are about to launch an all-out attack on your house. Sincerely, the zombies. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to level 10, and level 10 is always the last level of a given world, and it's always a unique level. Every five levels you'll get in a unique level, so here we are. Got a huge amount of zombies that are coming here. We don't get to choose our plants, this is another conveyor belt level, so the conveyor belt will give us the plants that it decides. And we get a new music song. Music song, that's how you do it. So I decided to put the snow pea back there because there was a conehead zombie, which takes more damage. Then I put a regular pea shooter slightly in front because I want the snow peas in the back. Now I've got more plants, but I'm holding on to them because I want to see where the zombies come next. I don't want to put a, a plant down somewhere. And then, okay. Conehead zombie coming here, so I'm going to plant a repeater there. I'll plant a regular pea shooter here, and then I'll plant a repeater there. So now I've got at least something in every lane. A 
I'll put the snow peas behind the regular old pea shooters. Because the repeaters can hold their own a little bit better. And the plant, what plants you get are kind of random. However, they generally wait towards certain things. Like, you're more likely to get pea shooting plants than you are to get something like a potato mine. But still, you can get unlucky on the conveyor belt levels, but I've never had it in Plants vs. Zombies 1 that I got so unlucky on a conveyor belt level that I just, there was no way of beating it. Partly because the game, the game is easy enough that even if you get kind of screwed over by the conveyor belts, you should be okay. Probably should have put the pea shooter down there, but eh, that's fine. Also, the conveyor belt can only hold so many plants. So eventually, like, if I get one more thing on the conveyor belt, I'm gonna have to start using them. In fact, I'm gonna start putting some potato mines down. Oh good, another snow pea. I've been wondering where the snow peas are. Getting cherry bombs on the conveyor belt is actually quite nice. Because then you could just... With two cherry bombs on the conveyor belt, you can literally just put one here, put one there, boom, every zombie is dead. It's kind of nuts. And speaking of nuts, I also have a good amount of walnuts. can't vault. Oh, he actually did try to vault over a cherry bomb. Didn't work for him because he blew up immediately. Dang, this is good music though. I've underestimated you. And yeah, I'll put the walnut in front of the, uh, chomper. Remember, Cherry Bomb blows up a free by free air. Oh, and right there, you saw the chomper tried to eat a zombie, but then the zombie died before he could. And so he bit, and then nothing happened. There we go. Snow pee in every lane. If I ran for president, that would be my, like, campaign, uh, <laughs> slogan. Vote Artie. A snow pee in every lane. Chonk. Oh, yay! He died just before the chonk happened. Let's see. Put you there. Alright, there we go. Oh, boy. Another huge wave of zombies is coming. Look at all those cherry bombs. Oh, it's the final wave. Oh. <laughs> so we're just gonna wait a little bit for... Zombies spawning and boom. Ooh, and we got the Explode Detonator achievement. I didn't think I'd get that that early. Okay, so we've gotten two achievements thus far. The Spadao achievement we got at the beginning was the achievement you get just for blowing up a zombie with a potato mine. It's the easiest achievement in the game. The Explode Detonator achievement is a lot harder. You have to blow up ten zombies with one cherry bomb. So you, like, oftentimes even the huge waves are not big enough to do that, but I'm glad we got that early. I, normally I'd have to grind for that, but that's awesome. Two achievements down. And here we get a new plant, and this is one of the most important plants of the entire game. You got a new plant. The Puff Shroom costs zero sun. It's literally free to plant. Shoots short-ranged spores at the enemy. Try saying that five times fast. Y you can't. Shoot short-range spores. Shoot short-range spores. It's, like, it's way harder than you might think. Yeah, so this plant will be incredibly useful in the upcoming world. However, 
We don't have time to start the next world this video. We've got to end it there. So that clears the first world, which is what I call the front yard. So it was very easy. Next world will be interesting. We're going to get a, a little bit of a change of scenery. And things are going to start getting um, a little interesting, I suppose you could say. But you'll have to wait for that next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Colorful Artie. Tune in next time. We'll be continuing our gardening hobby to fight off the hordes of the undead. And this time we're going to World 2, and it should be the same, but different. We'll have to, we'll have to see what's going to lie in store for us that, uh, then, though. So, until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.